you know, we, we had this limb break, we had this limb break, and you can't see it unless you get close. It's actually split the bark up this part right here. So I could come in, we could cut this limb off and cut this limb off and hope to save this. But in experience, most of the time I've seen, if you lose one or two limbs around a crow's foot like this, this one will generally be weak and it'll blow out and break anyway. And so generally, this is a lost side. So let's lose the side, Charles. Also, if you look, if you come around to the side, you'll see where these two branches come up and you can see that this is a Pawnee. They've got terrible crotch angles, really narrow. And you can see how this bark contusion is already starting to form. And so if this wouldn't have split out and you let this grow in a couple of years, you probably would have lost the whole tree down here because it would have split right in two. Charles, you want to step north about two feet. Yeah, you're, we're both kind of watching, yeah. watching the big ant pile right here. It wasn't active when we were here the other day. I don't bother you guys. <laughs> Now it already looks better. Okay. That's a start. Now we look at the tree. Unfortunately, most of the growth has been heading to the north over here. The wind's carrying this whole tree way over. And if we let this tree continue to go, the odds are it's going to continue to grow way out here, away from the main tree site that we would not like to occur. So Charles and I discussed it. It was a joint decision. We, we, I won't take all the credit right now. We talked about it the other day. We felt it was best to go ahead and take this end off, this side off, and try to straighten the tree back up using this limb right here. You all want to watch out on that side. Yeah, you got me, but I'm okay. We can't make a decision. We really don't have a decision. And sometimes you restart the tree. That's what I would have done. And that is something you can do. So, so I, don't I be afraid. To, if, you, if you do take major cuts and it, that tree's going to grow, the key is you come out and you start pruning the, some of those back and force start finding that central leader or a couple of them that could be a central leader and protecting them as much as you can. That's what we have here is a very similar situation to what we would have down here. We have a number of limbs all coming out together. You're going to have a lot of narrow crotches right there. I don't know if I'm going to try and cut it without being up on a ladder right now and, and take a chance of ripping something out. But normally we go ahead and come out and we take some limbs out, choose which one's going to be our central leader. Once again, when I get way up to the top, I'm going to have to clean that out and make continue on as my central leader. But we're going to wind up choosing just a central leader to continue up and force our scaffold limbs out. Uh, as you get higher up in the tree and everything, you want to make those force out as flat as possible. These aren't too bad. The one coming out right here. This one is probably okay right there. And we'll continue on with the one in the very central to carry up and be our central leader. Okay. You only have one when you're done, right? When I'm done, I have one central leader and I'm going to take the competition down so they can't compete with it. I don't leave two limbs the same height up in the tree. I'm going to clip one of them back to let all the growth go in the one that's going to become the dominant shoot. And that will be my central leader for the tree. And then I'll choose my scaffolds as limbs force out from these limbs here, choose my scaffolds from those. 